I'm a feminist, but... <laughs> Hello, Birmingham, and welcome to the Guilty Feminist. <laughs> and I'm a feminist, but... Backstage in the green room, people are chatting. Oh, no. That's my delivery ringing. <laughs> really sorry it's just we don't get dinner otherwise someone just answer the phone backstage and tell them bring it to the stage door number 26 it's a Leon it's a Leon this has never happened before Birmingham this is this is why you come out to the live show because it's this kind of drama that you can expect if if the oh I can't say that um I was just going to say if the delivery guy's hot send him up but that's not right is it? that's not right that's not right that's objectifying uh, are you recording this? Because I could get cancelled for everything I've said so far. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but when we were all sitting around in the dressing room, somebody said, Deborah, you've got some gossip, tell us. And I said, I do have some gossip. And I swear to you what happened is every single woman in the dressing room spun around on their chairs and went, <gasps> and honestly, it was like, tell me more, tell me more, like, does he have a car? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And Celia B turned to me and went, that, that was like we were in a musical then. And I went, I know, isn't it amazing? What I love more than anything about the guilty feminist women is that if someone says they have gossip, people behave as if they're in a musical. <laughs> and we gossiped about another woman. I tell you that, but she deserved it. If you knew, if you heard it, you'd be like, no, fair. I can't tell you, obviously. Please say something, Alison. I will, okay. I'm a feminist, but... I don't know why I moved myself there. Uh, I'm a feminist, but I've been keeping up to date with the Rooney Vardy court case saga. Oh, well, the And I've, I've made a discovery. I've made a discovery about myself. Um, I've been thinking about it, really. I, I think I fancy Wayne Rooney. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain why. You better. Number one, the court pictures they have of them, the drawings, right? I don't know, I think I like it. And the other thing is, genuinely, I want a man that will financially support me for millions of quid of a court case to have a spat with another woman, right? <laughs> That is true fidelity. I don't care what he does other than that. I'm like, that man is the nicest man ever. I sort of see what you mean in a weird way. Uh, yeah. Genuinely, he's holding her handbag. He's holding her handbag and he's fiscally supporting her through about 12 different lawyers because she accused someone of gossip on an Instagram page. I'm, I'm rather nervous now you're going to sell the gossip I gave you in the green room to the newspaper and I'm going to have to take you to court, Alison. Oh, lawyer up. Lawyer up. Well, do you think our partners would be there, like, banging money on the table and holding our handbags? <laughs> well, my partner has no money, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. would uh, psychologically support me. Tom Selinsky, if you're listening, which you have to be because you edit it, just so you know, I would expect you to be there throwing money at my court case against Alison Spittle. Yeah. My boyfriend would be holding me back going, she's not worth it, love. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! I'm a feminist, but... <laughs> right, so I was scrolling on YouTube like I do a lot when I can't sleep, and I saw this video that popped up, and it was from the BBC, and the name of the video was, Is this London's thinnest building? And I've never felt more jealous of a building. <laughs> my first thought was like, well, what's your workout plan? How did you... <laughs> and then my second thought was like, I bet you're a stupid building. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, the shard, skinny bitch. Yeah, I was so angry. I was so angry, I was like, well, you're naturally thin. Because <laughs> you were designed that way. Yeah, I was like, some of us have to work for it. <laughs> Celia. Deborah. Do this audience know that you're a Birmingham local? Yeah, do, do you? Oh my God. It's so good to be back. And I, I know that people like shit on Birmingham. Um, it's and not do, I one. only do it when I'm in London. Um, <laughs> and the second I come back to Birmingham, I'm like, this, this is Hollywood, baby. <laughs> but it's good to move to London and come back to Birmingham because everyone's like, 
are they all dickheads? <laughs> and then I go, yeah. <laughs> but then in London, I'm like, oh, fucking peasants in Birmingham. Am I right? <laughs> well, why are you losing the crowd so early? No, Birmingham. <laughs> the thing is with Birmingham, and you can back me up on this, if you've lived here for more than five years, like I have, you get to shit on it. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Celia is originally from Paris. Yeah. I don't know how this is going down, honestly. I moved from Paris to Birmingham. I was here for eight years, which is so long. It's so long. It's like, it's so long. It's like dog years. It's so long. And I was here on purpose, and no one does that. But I loved it so much. I loved it so much. Sometimes when I like walk around thinking and I miss Birmingham, there's a voice that pops into my head, and it's like, you're right, Bab, and it just keeps me... Really keeps me going. <laughs> I love your response to this. Is so she's one of ours. She's fine. She can say. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but um, on the train here, um, I I upgraded to first class because I thought, you know, why not? It's a tenner. Let's do it. it Was it a shit. tenner? Yeah, but you didn't even get a cup of tea or a bottle of water. It was just a, a napkin on the back of the seat. It was a bit disappointing, actually. And then, in Northampton, some boys got on, and they were, like, 17 or something. And, um, and they were the sort of boys that, at school, I wouldn't really have been able to look at, let alone talk to, but I would have had a crush on all of them. And I had my headphones in, but they weren't turned on. And <laughs> <laughs> Were you eavesdropping on the handsome men while pretending to be listening to a symphony? Yes, I was but they turned out I don't know why I'd be surprised actually hindsight they turned out to be such little shits they were talking about cheating on their girlfriends tonight they were talking about staying in a hostel and trying to get into pubs none of them would have got into a pub they would have been they they were talking about um they were talking about staying in a hostel and then the birthday boy said, well, can I have the bed to myself in case I pull? And then um, the other boys said, well, th- that's not fair unless we all have a go on her. Oh. It was awful. I was shocked. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, oh my God, I wish I knew your mother's numbers and I would <laughs> make them tell you off. And, and I would be so angry and I hate these little shits. And then one of them looked at me and went, I would. <laughs> And I felt pleased. <laughs> Get out. Sorry. This is the very first I'm a feminist part where I have to say it's I'm gone sorry. too far. I, I didn't mean to feel pleased and I feel angry at myself and I feel like I'm cleansing myself here tonight and I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? I couldn't it's, help it. It's the worst one I've heard. And one time, <laughs> one time Sarah Pascoe said, I'm a feminist but... I would sell the Spice Girls to Boko Haram to get on Strictly Come Dancing. (laughs) And I still think yours is worse. And we are all staying in the same hotel tonight, and if I see one 17-year-old young man come through that door, I will be... You're sleeping with me, right? I mean, not in a... Now this sounds like sexual harassment. I don't mind that, actually, Deborah. I feel like that that would make me a better person. (laughs) I don't mind either. Sorry, I've disappointed you. No, it's fine. So sorry, everybody. I'll I, go back to Brighton. I don't. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm now. If I'm. If 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 you say no, never mind. No, I, I'm also thinking what you're thinking, Deborah. Which is, is the sex transformative? Does it make you more feminist? Yeah. What if you want? If you sleep with Deborah. Yeah. What if you I, get any it's of that? It's not a biblical get... healing to sleep with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want that getting out there. That's not sexy. It's like being. You have a dunk. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the feminist version of touching Jesus' garment. No, no. I've seen I your garments. It's lovely. <laughs> How did you see it? I'm a feminist, but I have so many pervy questions. <laughs> this has gone on so long. It's all been so wrong. Our tour manager is standing in the wings. I, I haven't even looked at him, but I know he's going... <laughs> Say, you're 20 minutes in and you haven't even started the show, and already you're talking about the whole cast hooking up later in the Malmaison. <laughs> yes, that's right. We're staying there. Fact, normally we're in a travel lodge, but for some reason we got upgraded to the Malmaison, and we're very excited about it. Come round later to the bar for drinks. She's not joking. I'm not joking. Those schoolboys cannot come. No, they're in Liverpool now. 
Oh, how do you know? I heard that you everything. know too much. <laughs> <laughs> they're underaged and they're bad people. I'm a feminist, but <laughs> I've just realized that in order to get out of ever staying in a hostel, I might cheat on my girlfriend. <laughs> if those are the choices. Right, yeah, no, super. Um, <laughs> it's gone so, so far, weird. we've really missed Should the Should everybody go back out and then come back in? Yeah, let's like start the show again. What yeah, are you talking yeah. about? We found out that Deborah's badge is like <laughs> capable of changing a person. <laughs> Just to making be, us whole again. Just making be, us better women. I can't wait. It's like a pilgrimage space. And it also wears a little cape. Oh. <laughs> Just to be clear, my vagina is not Lord's. <laughs> and if you go down there, you will not see a virgin crying. <laughs> but can, you, can you buy as many beads? <laughs> Are we ready to start the show? Yeah. Then welcome, welcome, welcome to the Guilty Fabulous Warming Up! Big round of applause for Alison Spittle, Celia A.B., Jess Robinson and Catherine Bohan. Four women will be seeing a lot more of tonight here at the Guilty Fabulous! Hello, 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 Birmingham. Oh my goodness. The show has started in such a way that I don't know how to put the genie back in the bottle. <laughs> but, uh, listen, it has not been this racy anywhere else in the country. We've been to Brighton, we've been to York, we've been to Reading, we've been to lots of places with their own personalities. But Birmingham, for some reason, every time we do a show here, it's always the filthiest. <laughs> and I blame you. And it's hard to know how, because we've started it. But I just feel it's the atmosphere you bring. I always say, like, uh, in, you know, we go to Dublin a lot, and they, they know how to bring a rock concert to a podcast recording. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we, we go to different places, and there's always different... I mean, I, sort of Glasgow's a revolution, and Newcastle's a riot, and Manchester's a festival. Um, and we recently went to the RSC in Stratford, and they brought Radio 4. And <laughs> they just sat there with their arms folded going, hmm. Very interesting and so amusing, I may even smile. <laughs> and I told them that early on. I was like, I feel you've brought more intellect than spirit. And I said, you know, wherever we'd been the night before, oh, they were off the, I said, Sheffield were riotous, they were incredible. And then they really upped their game because there's no way Stratford upon Avon is going to be outdone by Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, woo, we can party! Just because they wanted top marks, because they're all like A, they're A star students there. Do you know what I mean? And whatever the game is. So Birmingham, what are you going to bring? That's the very real question. Um, I know you're judging us. You've bought the tickets. You're here judging us. Like, how good are we? The truth of the matter is, backstage, those comedians will be talking about you. I don't know if you know this, but comedians judge audiences as much as audience judge com comedians. Backstage, they're like, yeah, they're all right. Or, yeah, they're really nice. Or, oh, my God, they're the best audience we've ever had. Um, once we came off and I said they were the finest audience of their generation <laughs> and so Birmingham how are you feeling tonight on a scale of yeah we're out for a gentle night of comedy and feminism but we are heavier on the feminism than the comedy up to by the end of the night we'll all have our clothes off <laughs> like, there's got to be somewhere somewhere between women's hour and an orgy <laughs> what are we going for? Uh, so if Women's Hour is here, I've never done this before, I am making all of this up based on what's just happened. Uh, so uh, this, if Women's Hour is here, and um, let's call it a, a sex-positive, highly inclusive, orgiastic consensual experience for those who wish... <laughs> with voyeuristic-only tickets for those who do not wish, and also a chill-out zone for those who really don't wish, which is also a sort of feminist conversation pit. So that's, that's at the top level. That's at the top level. At the bottom level, we've got Women's Hour. I've been on Women's Hour a number of times. I made a joke once. It wasn't allowed. They just said... She just looked at me and went, no. Just, no, that's not welcome here. And I was like, I understand. Um, nothing wrong with Women's Hour. Women's Hour is very... It's in its place. It's very good. I can't put this out on the podcast, can I? I'll never get invited back. Okay, let me say this again. Nothing wrong with Woman's Hour. It's an important show. <laughs> what do you think they'll make of that? What do you think they'll make of that? It's an important show, but it's just not the same tone. 
So woman's hour is here. The consensual opt-in, opt-out, all-inclusive... All that sounds like a buffet now. All-inclusive, all orgiastic experience post-lockdown is up here. And then there's everything in between. So I need you to applaud and cheer where you would like this show to sit so that the comedians know how to pitch it, okay? So if you're looking for woman's hour, clap here. <laughs> so a couple of people, and that's what they want. They've come to the wrong place. But <laughs> if you were after woman's hour and you want to leave now and get the full ticket price back, I don't know if that's possible. Now, I don't know what they're going to say at the box office, but give it a go. Okay, woman's hour, applaud here. If you'd like it to be... So this is Woman's Hour here, and this is the audience response. So I'm just going to pull my hand up now, and you tell me where to stop. Ready? So applaud when... It, and everyone be true to themselves. Don't, don't, be guided, <laughs> don't be guided by what others want. You say what you really want, okay? Woman's Hour, and then we're going up. Then we're going up. Then we're going up. <laughs> so, the... <laughs> The all-inclusive, orgiastic, opt-in, consensual experience it is. Yeah. Comedians, you've heard it here. Uh, pitch accordingly. Um, you will have heard me on The Guilty Feminist um, asking for small acts of feminism in each city. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, just give us a cheer if you listen to the podcast. Woo! Just give us a cheer if you don't know what you're at. Okay. <laughs> Notice how those cheers are less certain, less assertive, <laughs> less feminist, if you will. Give us a cheer if you're a feminist. Woo! Give us a cheer if you're not a feminist. <laughs> that was a squeak, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I was expecting no. Uh, but in fact, what I got was... Um, and I think the part of you... Who, who said they would? No. You don't want to say now in case you get killed in a crush. Uh, that's fine. Um, so uh, just give us a cheer if you are a cisgendered straight man <laughs> you're, you're waving at me sir yes what's your name Robert. what sir Robert. Robert Robert do you listen to the podcast <laughs> you, you no no did you think this was going to be Greece <laughs> you're here on the wrong night it's touring it's coming in um, what was the why are you here your partner listens. And uh, is your partner a woman? Yes. Yes. And your partner, hello? Um, and Robert, what's your partner's name? Beth. Beth, great. So Beth listens, but you don't listen. But you are open, instead of just like pressing play, to schlepping across Birmingham to come here. <laughs> what motivated that? Um. <laughs> Brownie points. <laughs> you applauding that <laughs> brownie points that this man feels he's going to get favours from his wife is she your wife? no and she never will be <laughs> brownie points brownie points and we applaud that is how low the bar is for men oh my god the bar for heterosexual cisgendered men is that low that we go he wants to please her, even if it is for a reward. <laughs> How is he pleasing her? By agreeing to come to an event which acknowledges equality for her and him. It's not good enough, Robert. Was it Robert? Was that his name? Yeah. You should be more memorable, Robert. Because I wasn't sure. You could work on that. Being a feminist would be a memorable thing. Um, so that could be something you could do. Would you identify as a feminist, Robert? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. So you're certainly a feminist, but not enough to listen to the guilty feminist. <laughs> but what are you doing for feminism then, if you're a feminist? <laughs> Gotta be doing something, Robert. You can't just be saying I'm a feminist. You've got to be doing something for feminism. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I didn't... I, he's not in the front row. It's not like I came along and went... You! I said, any men, and he went, over here! He did this! He didn't, I didn't volunteer, he volunteered, Beth didn't volunteer him, 
He volunteered himself. He went, me, talk to me. It is very much his own fault. Robert, in what way, in what, how does the feminism man- manifest itself? No, I'm not, I, I don't want to be mean to you. Well, I do, but I'm trying not to be. I just, what, what, well, how, does, how, how would you express your feminism? Is it more of a feeling than an action? <laughs> you feel women are equal? Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Reward men thinking the bare minimum. Men acknowledging that we are human is not enough. Well done, Robert. You felt that. No, we're not having that. So, Robert, what I'm going to do is ask you to turn that feeling into, uh, into action... Um, and do something. So tonight, uh, let's find out who has anything feminist on the boil. Who's got something feminist on the boil? This is not how the show's gone anywhere else in the country. (laughs) I have a few things that I do at the top, generally, and it's different everywhere, of course, because it's a podcast, I want to make it different everywhere. Never before has anything like any of the things that have happened tonight happened. (laughs) Never. And it will never happen again. But it is happening now. So... Who's doing something feminist at the moment in the, in the community in Birmingham? And it can be a very small act. We've been asking for small acts so that they, you don't intimidate others. Uh, because sometimes we have people go, oh, I co-founded it. And then immediately everyone goes, well, I've done nothing with my life. So, uh, so anything? Yes. What are you doing? You're pointing her and she doesn't want to talk, but it's like you'd be very good in a police state. She's here. Uh, what's your name? You did something inappropriate. That's why she's pointing it. She fixes vaginas. Well, apparently mine is holy. Um, <laughs> it's not. What's, what, what do you, in what way do you fix vaginas? It's a midwife. She's a midwife. Oh. Okay. Is that, fix, is that how we talk about midwives? Do they fix vaginas? I thought they got things out of them. You're a sp- you're a specialist mid- midwife at fixing vaginas. Okay, so I was really looking for a project Robert could help with. <laughs> or contribute to. I was looking for some kind of action-based something where he could give a tenner a month or he could volunteer. I'm not going to ask Robert to volunteer to help you fix vaginas. Just, no, that's a hard line for me and I imagine Robert. If not, Beth. Um, yes? You're a normal midwife. <laughs> and you also fix vaginas. You're a regular, so we've got a regular and a specialist midwife. Both fix vaginas, but one fixes them more swiftly. Slash. Do you, what, you get the hard cases. You would, you would fix a regular... Bog standard. Bog standard. <laughs> so if the badge has in any way come undone... <laughs> sounds... Very painful. You, you'll do a bit of the old job. stitch up. So, like, okay. So, I understand. If my the hem has come down on my skirt, I might pop it into the dry cleaner and go. Do you mind dry cleaning that? Why are you there? Could you stitch up the hem? That's what you do. If I want a really fabulous dress for a red carpet, and I think no one's going to make what I want, I've got an idea though, and I go off and buy some fabulous fabric and take it into a dress designer and say, can you make a creation? That's what you do. No. You're saying you don't do designer vaginas. It's disappointing for all of us. What, so what, look, what, it's more like if, so, so it's more like if my dress has, like, been caught in a thunderstorm and it's really destroyed. But I'm like, no, it's my favourite, it's got sentimental value. And then I bring it to a, they go, oh, we can't really fix it here at the dry cleaners, you'll need a specialist tailor for that. Is it more like that? Say she made me a lovely dress. I'm saying, I have to repeat for the podcast, yeah. Say she made me a lovely dress. And you put it in the washing machine. And you put it in the washing machine. And, what, on the wrong cycle. And then it shrunk. And then it came undone down the side because of the silk. I'd bring it to you. And then what? Next level. So you'd... Next level at saying, can we fix this? she, she She will have done the basic fixing... But you will go, look, if she says, look, this is beyond me. You, this, this dress cannot be repaired. Just throw it away. You will go, no. So you will swoop in as a sort of vaginal superhero. This is not yeah. the way I thought the show was going to go at all. If you haven't yet had a baby, clearly don't. That's what I've learned from that. 
What, but you're, yeah, you're fixing them. Yeah, but it sounds like if a dress, it's not painful, is it? It's just like, oh, that's sad. My dress got wrecked in the wash. I'll get over it. If my vagina gets destroyed in the wash, I will not get over it. I don't... It's going to be painful and, you know, whatever. Anyway, it's really put everyone off the orgy now. <laughs> everyone was like, yes, we're out of lockdown. We're here for a consensual a la carte orgy. And then we went straight to, if your vagina is mangled in a dryer. <laughs> and everyone went... My tour manager is flashing a light at me, and I don't know if it's because I'm over time or just wildly inappropriate. <laughs> but either way, if somebody could, by the way, uh, come up with some project that Robert could help with, that would be amazing. So next time I see you, if anyone's got like, could be like a local Birmingham magazine or something that you're doing, or a petition that you need more people on, or and something like that, something so that he can practically get involved with feminism, and other people might want to too. It's not just down to Robert, but I wouldn't. <laughs> You'll be relieved to hear Robert, but I would like something he can get involved in, and ideally something that doesn't involve vaginas, if that's okay. Um, if anyone's got something, next time I see you, um, just I'll ask, and then you can wave at me. Are you ready for your first comedian? Are you excited? Feeling woman's hour? No, exactly. <laughs> or are you feeling poor woman's hour? It's perfectly fine. Or are you feeling all you can eat? Conceptual <laughs> buffet. Then keep that applause going for the guilty feminist favourites, the one, the only, Alison Spittle. <laughs> at the side of the stage I was like Chris there's a lot of vag talk going on and then I was like I'm gonna do more I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> hello how are we getting on so first off let's talk about um so I've been doing comedy a while and when I first started doing comedy I used to get compliments right and it used to be off other male comedians and they would say to me Alison I think it's great you're a female comedian and um, you haven't done any comedy about your vagina. And I just want to congratulate you, like, fair play. And I, when I first started comedy, um, I was a bit of a misogynist, right? And I had very low self-esteem. So I would kick my whole gender under the bus for one compliment, right? Like, once I got my nails done, and the lady who was doing my nails told me I had beautiful nail beds... And I held on to that for two years. Like, I would look at my nail beds and go, you're worth it, baby. You know what I mean? So I would say to the, to the men, I would go, yeah, ah, look, fuck those bitches. Um, I don't do any comedy about my vagina because I've got so much more to talk about. There's just so much I have to talk about. The reason why I didn't do comedy about my vagina when I first started doing stand-up comedy was um, fuck all was happening to it, right? Just... <laughs> There was nothing to write home about. It was like I was involved in a war, but I was doing the admin, you know. <laughs> I'd be there at the photocopier going, oh, one day I'm going to get called up. <laughs> and I'll be very afraid, but I'll do it, you know. <laughs> That's the way I was. But, like, I'm not, I'm not joking. So much has happened lately that I have to tell you about it, right? First off, I'm, I'm, I had a pregnancy scare. Um, the way I got the pregnancy scare was I paid attention to my menstrual cycle, right? <laughs> Before that, was never scared. Um, and how I started paying attention to my menstrual cycle is I got a period tracker app. My friend, I asked my friend, like, how she's changed her life recently. She's a comedian, but she has a mortgage, so she's something that I aspire to generally <laughs> now. So I was like, how have you changed your life? Like, how have you got a mortgage? How have you, how have you made changes? And she was like... Do you track your periods, Alison? And I was like, what? There's a period tracker app. And I'm like, I don't know how this will help me get a mortgage, but I'll give it a go. But I think it could help you get a mortgage. Like, if you imagine there's two people sitting in front of you, you're a bank manager. Person that the left is a successful comedian who knows where her next period is coming from, right? <laughs> person on the right is a self-employed clown that's just free bleeding all over your office, right? <laughs> You're gonna go for the self-employed comedian. You are. It's business. It's business, right? 
So I decided I was going to track my periods, right? Got the little iCal app. It's got a little cat on it uh, because women love cats. And uh, I know it's weird. <laughs> I wish I could pick another animal. Like, my period is not a cat. You know, it's a crow. It's one of those things where you're like, this is ominous. Uh, you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, ah! um, <laughs> anger! And, um, you know. So I wish, I wish I could have a crow in mine, but it's a little cat. And it's very strange, because you, you, you tell the cat when you last had your period, it's a lot like um, Catholic confession in that way, you know. <laughs> You just whisper into the cat's ear, Dear cat, it's been two weeks since my last period. And the cat will look at you and go, That's grand, my child. <laughs> go free, <laughs> you know? So one day I realised I hadn't put um, my period... I hadn't had a period in three months. The cat was scratching at the screen, going, Please get yourself a pregnancy test, Alison. And I was really scared because I didn't want to be pregnant. So I did the thing that a lot of uh, scared pregnant people or people that can be pregnant do, right? Which is I bought the most expensive pregnancy test possible because I thought that would somehow give me the result I wanted. Like I was like, I'm going to financially invest, right? <laughs> Into the result. So I got the clear blue digital, which is the most expensive pregnancy test you can get. It's incredible. It not only tells you if you're pregnant, it tells you how pregnant you are, you know. And it also, it just, it's beautiful. It's got curves in all the right places. <laughs> it's the Maserati of pregnancy tests. It's that beautiful that I apologise to it before pissing on it, right? <laughs> and so, you know, I'm doing my pregnancy test, I'm pissing on it, I'm having a cry, right? Just giving it all the moisture I can give, right? <laughs> they don't put that in the clear blue ads, do they? <laughs> Just the woman going, no, please, God, no. <laughs> so I, uh, my, my relationship with contraception, I've got a, 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 a contraceptive bar in my arm. I got that inserted about five years ago in Ireland, right, where I'm from. I had a TV series in Ireland, and the first bit of money that I got with my TV series, like someone would buy a designer handbag or something like that, I bought myself contraception. I bought myself the luxury about not worrying about jizz. Like, that was my <laughs> first purchase. And the thing is, you have to pay to get it out again, and it becomes obsolete after about two years, uh, the contraceptive bar. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. I, I didn't get commissioned for a second series, so I didn't get any more money. So I was thinking, oh, what, what, what damage can it actually do? Like, it'll be fine. I'll leave it there. Um, so I feel a lot like NASA in that way, you know. NASA puts up a satellite into space and it orbits around the Earth for a couple of years and then it becomes obsolete, right? And you're like, NASA, what are you going to do with that satellite? And NASA are like, ah, fuck it, leave it there, it'll be fine. <laughs> so I've essentially got space trash in my arm right now. <laughs> And that's all the time I have. Um, you've been so lovely. If you want to see the rest of that, I'm on in Edinburgh and the show is called Wet. Uh, it was originally about aqua aerobics, but then this shit happened. <laughs> and I kept the name. I was like, actually, it kind of fits. So <laughs> I hope you have a lovely evening. Best of luck. Bye. <laughs> Special, everybody. Definitely go to Edinburgh, if only to see the end of that story. So uh, here's the thing. Um, already on the Guilty Feminist WhatsApp group, my vagina is being called a holy relic. <laughs> so great. So yay. Yay, Birmingham. I don't blame you. Do blame Robert a bit. <laughs> it's not Robert's fault. It's Robert, it's not your fault. Are you still there, Robert? <laughs> Excellent. Are you coming back after the interval? <laughs> Beth says yes. Oh, he's really working for those brownie points now, isn't he? He thought this would be an easy set of brownie points. He was like, sure, just come out, sit next to her, laugh a bit, have a beer in the interval, fuck off home. Oh, oh Robert. <laughs> Robert, 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 Robert. Those brownie points are going to be very hard won. Each and every brownie point. What do you get if you get, like, ten brownie points? Do you get something? There's what, sorry? There's no safe answer to that. So give us a dangerous answer. <laughs> oh. Too dangerous, Robert. 
too dangerous. There's enough of us, Robert. We could take you. Oh, yes. Peace and quiet. Jesus Christ. Beth, you're not married. Hmm? No. Are you living together? Do you have real estate together? Yeah. Children? Okay, so there's literally nothing stopping you walking out the door this evening. That is that. There's not a logistical problem with this. Okay, so just in case Robert needs more peace and quiet, does anyone have a spare room? <laughs> not for Beth, she's keeping the flat. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I hope you two are very happy together and stuff. <laughs> does anyone have anything, anyone have any feminism that they'd like Robert or anyone else to get involved in? Yes! I see a hand there. <laughs> What's your name? Big round of applause for Sophie, everybody! <laughs> Sophie, hello. We don't have tread, so you can't come up here, but just stand as in the light as possible. Okay. Sophie, tell me about what you're doing. Okay, hello. Um, so I work for Women's Aid in Coventry. Women's Aid in Coventry. <laughs> it's our 50th anniversary this year, um, and I'm currently organising the event that's going live next week, uh, a festival called Elevate Festival, um, and it's fundraising uh, for the 15th anniversary, so that's going to be at the Criterion Theatre in Coventry, who ever is from Cov, some of them here. Yeah. <laughs> but people come can up. come, you know what, people can go from Birmingham to Coventry just as easily as people can come from Coventry to Birmingham, <laughs> can't they Birmingham? It's true. Yeah, people from Coventry always come here. When do you ever go there? Never, that's when. <laughs> just, give me a, just give me a cheer if a Birmingham person, if you're a Birmingham person who's ever been to Coventry. <laughs> Have you ever been for a show? Yeah. <laughs> Fewer people. Why do you normally go there? I went to see the Twirly Woos. You went to see the Twirly Woos? <laughs> talking about my vagina again. <laughs> uh, what, what, what are the Twirly Woos? Children's TV show. Is that for you or your children? Your children. Okay, so your child. That's what she says. Um, Okay, so this show is going to be when? It's going to be Saturday the 16th of July. Saturday the 16th of July. Put it in your diary, everyone. It's Women's Aid. It's raising money. And who will be on the bill? What will the show be? So, uh, at the moment, I'm trying to get somebody from the specials to play. It's about to be confirmed, hopefully. Um, but if not, we've got Bar Pandora. They've recently been played on BBC Six Music. We've got Ace and Bros, um, Paradise of the Titans. And so it's like a music concert? It is, yeah. Of popular music? Yes, it's very Excellent. good local artists. Okay, so. very good local artists. So local <laughs> art, support local artists, support Women's Aid. How much tickets? I'll be ten pounds in advance, twelve on the door. Ten, so. and twelve on the door. So the question is, Robert, how many are you going to sell to your friends and family? <laughs> this is where your feminism kicks off. You're about to get some major brownie points, Robert. How many do you Three. reckon you could take and sell on? Because they're only ten or each. It's a bargain. How? Five. Oh, I don't think so, Robert. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living, Robert? What do you do for a living, Robert? Try to sell pizzas. <laughs> Paintings. Oh, you run an art gallery. What, what, you, what do you run? Um, I try to sell Your own paintings or other people's? Other oh, you're an art dealer. Fuck off. You can buy 10 tickets. <laughs> Thank you. So put Robert down for 10 tickets. That's £100, Robert. That's £100 for feminism. Think of all the brownie points. And also all the equality for women, which you love. Think about how much you love equality for women and then put that into a monetary value. It's only £100, Robert. You've never done anything for feminism before. You've only had a feeling. Think about how much longer Beth would stay with you if you did this wonderful thing. Think about how much you love Beth and how much you hate loneliness. (laughs) Beth? Beth? Uh, Are you okay to put Robert down for 10 tickets? Yes! Come on! Deal. Okay, all right. So you need to find Robert in the interval, okay? And uh, make sure you get his email because we need to hold him to that because I don't trust him. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Sophie. Hello, 
fuck buddies, future fuck buddies, and people that are completely confused as to why I'm calling you my fuck buddy. <laughs> my name is Kima Bob, and I am the creator, curator, and host of the Fuck It Up Comedy Club, aka the Femmes of Color Comedy Club, honey. And I am so excited to tell you that with the help of the Guilty Feminists, we are producing a Fuck It Up podcast. Oh, it's so exciting. It's an opportunity to hear incredible comedy and get to know the folks behind the funny. And these folks are people you've heard of, are fans of, and people that you will be fans of once you hear how dope their stuff is. Now the acronym FOC or FUCK stands for Films of Color. However, this show platforms women, gender non-conforming, non-binary, and trans masculine performers of color that's right honey you ain't gotta be fam you just gotta be funny and why is it important why should something like this exist shame on you for asking but i will answer we prioritize the experience of people of color on and off stage and encourage everybody else to check their privilege at the door and so far even straight white dudes are having a good time <laughs> Sit in, sit in a chair. Okay, so you might be thinking, there's a little ice. There's a little ice on that stage. It'll be great to break that ice. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to play a stupid fucking game just to get everyone chatting and vibing. Is that okay? Do I have your consent? <laughs> we, yeah. Yes. Thank you. I emailed you about it, so... <laughs> okay, so we're going to play a classic from, I don't know, secondary school, I guess? Did you, would you play a, a Would You Rather in secondary school? Yeah, we would call it high school, but yeah, we, we understand what you're saying. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and but primary. How old are you when you leave primary school? Enough. <laughs> uh, comedian Sophie Duker cancelled. <laughs> How old do you need for eleven? I think. Yeah, I think eleven. Right. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the educational industrial <laughs> complex. <laughs> Hashtag abolish schools. Hashtag everyone learn through doing. Um, <laughs> I'm educated by vibes. Okay, I did thanks. go to. I did. I I did go to circus school, which is why yes, I do that. Did. Freaky dance stuff. So I, instead of going to sixth form or college, I went to circus school, which I know... I, sh I think the first rule of circus school is you're not supposed to talk about you circus school. Don't talk about it. Or, or maybe that's mime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Oh, my God. But, no, it wasn't one of the posh ones, okay, in Canada or France. It was one for the shithead wayward teens in Bristol. I went to circus school in Bristol. So okay. that's why I'm like that. I love, I love a thrift shop in Bristol. That's all I know about it. Is if you want a crop top, take your ass to Bristol. And ketamine. Uh, crop tops and ketamine. C and K, darling. Okay. Guys, this is very serious. And I want you to prepare yourselves because this is kind of hardcore and I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. But would you rather be made of um, just like random meats? <laughs> or random cheese. This is what your entire person is made of. And you're walking around every day, you're either meat or your cheese. The meat is, is <laughs> between raw and cooked. It's just random meat. So it could be I, a selection of different meats. It's different meats. It's, you're either one half of charcuterie or the other half. <laughs> I'd, I'd go for different meats, definitely. The, the meat... It's, it's tough. It's, it's just, a selection. Oh my god, it's just me like ordering it. It's just me. An audience member has intelligently asked, is it smoked? Is it cured? Is it cooked? And I've responded, it's meat. <laughs> I immediately... Meat or cheese? I immediately know it's meat. Your no, meat? Yeah, no one wants to lick cheese. Oh, I want to lick cheese. <laughs> okay, Are people out here just meat. licking meat? Yeah, people want to lick meat. You see, like, okay, some... Breaking duck, news, duck breast. Sophie Duker, <laughs> meat licker. <laughs> Certified meat licker who thinks that children that graduate from secondary school are old enough. Um, hola, meat, meat or cheese? Oh, meat, 100%. Skin chicken actually looks really good. Like, it's a really good texture. Mm. 
I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's just stick with me. <laughs> it's great. She's got meat and also chosen her meat. Excellent. Charlie? I think I would go cheese. Mm. Yeah. What? Okay, a lot of the audience is feeling the cheese vibe. Respect. All right, the baby you bells in the front row. Right? Mm. Well, that might be a good thing for some people. Um, yeah, just nibble a little. And I am a bit, like, mm. like, I'm, I'm a bit soft and melty. And yeah. there's also hard cheeses, so you could have a combination of yes. textures. A bit of you tough and hard and... And stinky, so people stayed away. And then a bit yeah. of you, like, soft and melty. Thank you so much. This was so <laughs> stupid. And <laughs> you all really have been absolutely it. phenomenal. Um, I have some questions. This is so serious. This is a very uh, important moment. Yeah, oh, my God, I feel like Wendy Williams. I love it. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have to free Wendy. Have you guys seen? She's under, like, a conservatorship. Look how Britney was. Yeah, yeah, mm. it's fucked up. That... They took her show from her and stuff, and they have her... Wait, who is this? Wendy Williams. Oh! Oh, it's, it just scares me so much, because uh, I'm a little bit crazy and a little bit successful, and I'm afraid <laughs> that <laughs> one day someone's going to be like, should she be able to buy all of those porcupines? And I'm like, it's my <laughs> money! <laughs> just a rational fear about a rational goal. Um... Ola, you're like a pharmacist person. I am indeed. What is it like to give the British public drugs? <laughs> Legally. I'd like to give them different types of drugs. Unfortunately, I'm very restricted to what I can. But I'm... <laughs> if anybody wants any hookups, honestly, like, I'm planning to, like, drop out of that in a year, so... C- could you get me... <laughs> I'll take advantage while I still got the knife. <laughs> oh, my God, could you get me some Ritalin? <laughs> We'll talk after. Oh, here you go. Wait, I've got something in my pocket. Uh, I have allergies. It's hard for me to focus. Sometimes it's hard for me to get my dick up. <laughs> oh, you can kid. get that from anywhere. You, can, you, don't, you don't need it anymore. You, any, you can go to any pharmacy and get that. Just don't tell them that you've had it within three months and they'll give it to you. This is very... Ooh. I love this country. Have you, like, learned uh, anything about the British public by, like, having to deal with them in that way? No offense, How British people. How much BV but... is there? HPV? How much BV is there? In... Bacterial vaginosis. Oh! <laughs> that just proves how sweet and innocent I am. I had no idea. What I just about. wanted. I just wonder if I'm alone. Uh... If you walk up and down this room and just really take a deep breath in, you'll know. Ooh, thank you. Thank you'll you know. So much. Hey, I'm like made of cheese. <laughs> yeah, she's... she's made of cheese. Um, uh, Charles, you did, uh, like, a lot of times when comedians, I like to call you Charles sometimes, it feels homely, and I, I don't know anyone else named Charlie, because most of them are white men, and I just try to stay away. Um, <laughs> but you did some comedy at, like, a TED event, and, like, sometimes when we do serious comedy, people are like, chill out, love, this isn't a TED Talk. That's m- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me, so that was all pretty good. Uh, how, how was it? <laughs> Wait until you're actually the entertainment between TED Talks. So, you know, you, like, when you start to do this as a job, you get booked for mad stuff, but they were like, oh, yeah, do you want to come? We're doing a series of TED Talks. There's a musician in between, and then you can do some comedy in between. And I was like, yeah, cool. Like, it's a big theatre. Yeah. It'll get filmed. It'll it's be a, fun. It's a decent theatre. It'll be fun. And I rock up, and they're doing, like, the talks are so heavy. The musician is this like sweet little indie guy. He's like um he's about as black as Ed Sheeran. And <laughs> Ed Sheeran is black. Very black. Some respect on his name. And he's there on this little sort of like Korg Monopoly. And so he's the other entertainment. And then I've got to come on later after a massive talk about trafficking. Human trafficking. Oh, no. Which we all know is a great warm-up for the lols. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it gets me giggling thinking about horrible shit. And I have this joke in my set about, you know, pretending to be trafficked when I was younger because my mum is white. (laughs) (laughs) We're just like, I don't know her! Yeah, and I'll be like, you know, I just wind the window down in the public car park and just go, help me! (laughs) (laughs) And I just keep disowning my mum in these variety of ways. But that lands very differently after a very heavy talk about human trafficking. Oh, my gosh. Um, but yeah, so it was an experience. You know when you get a map, what's the maddest thing? Like you must have Do you had know what? where you, you've done you, like... You've literally triggered my PTSD. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So when I first started doing comedy, like, I would take any gig that they would offer me. And Manchester University during Ramadan invited me to do a comedy set. So I was like, is this an Islamic event? As you can all tell, my material is probably not the most halal. And... Um, <laughs> So I was like, is this, is this an Islamic event? And they were like, no, no, we want a comedian, blah, 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 blah. So um, on the lineup, I didn't even check the lineup, my bad. The musician dropped out and the dancer dropped out. And I was like, why did they drop out? So I was like, is this an Islamic event? I kept asking them. Anyways, I rocked up to this event and they gave me the itinerary. And it was like religious speaker one, how to Ooh. enter. Is, yeah, you're the easiest entrance to Jannah, paradise. Speaker two, how to not recommit sins after Ramadan. <laughs> Speaker three, Ola Labib. And I thought, oh my oh. God. So I went up to the organizer and I was like... my butthole material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyways, I walk into, it's a massive hall and I swear to God, oh my God, I'm actually perspirating remembering this. There was a black curtain in the middle of the room and it was segregated. Oh my gosh. And there was a stage in the front and I thought, holy fuck. In my head, not out loud. I was, and I was like, oh my God. So I went on stage and I was like, okay, I'm going to do the most PG jokes that I have. So I do this joke about my mum, nobody laughed. I did another joke, nobody, and I thought, what do people have in common? And I was like, well, apparently only 10% of the British population haven't seen Game of Thrones. Right. So I was like, all right, let's talk about Game of Thrones. I was like, so who's seen Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> Silence. And I was like, no one in here seen Game of Thrones? Silence. At this point, I got really fucking pissed off. I was like, well, according to British statistics, only 10% <laughs> so somebody lying. of Brits haven't seen Game of Thrones. And are you telling me 10% of that population is in this room? Let me remind you, it's Ramadan. And you know what they say about lying during Ramadan. Oh, my gosh. Some fucking bellend in the front was like... <laughs> I'm like, bitch, why are you shaking? You're not going to go to hell for watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. Cut a long story short, I was like, you know what? May God forgive me for everything that I'm thinking right now. I put the mic down and I bounced. And I didn't gig for two months after that. Jeez. Yeah. When a gig is not going well for me, I sweat generally under my tits. Um, <laughs> just wondering, is there any... Uh... <laughs> Is this a commonality? <laughs> There's no space under mine for sweat to collect, to be honest. Right? <laughs> I was just, what tits? What tits? <laughs> flows. It just flows from under the tits. If I'm working too hard, I'm like, oh, this is, oh, God. Could you, could you wrap, a, wrap a towel under? Just a towel under like the tits. Like a little towel under the tits. Or like a sweat band. Sanitary towel. Have you, Sophie, I know you're like astronomical levels, but if you had a gig... <laughs> really, really no, good looking, no, yeah. No, I'm not, I wasn't going to ask about your tits, though. I, yeah, look up, look up. Um, it's, <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> what's happening? Um, have you ever had a, have you ever had a gig where, um, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a gig where you felt sweaty between the boobs? Mm. Like something that's made you go, oh yeah, God. Yeah, it's so tough. Like, Niagara. I'm, yeah, it's tough, it's hard, there's a challenge. Oh, yeah, sure. I kind of, I, I sometimes dress illogically for gigs. So I went to do a gig with uh, Rob Delaney, who is a comedian you might have seen in Catastrophe. Uh, or, big or Dad the, energy. Uh, big Dad, hey, that's, that's the energy. Um, yeah, I just, I went and I didn't wear any underwear um, <laughs> to the gig. But I was also wearing like a tartan dress that had like a slit up the back. And as I was on stage, I was like, this slit is getting wider. And I'm not wearing any underwear. Oh, no. It was touch and go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. But if you've got IBS, that actually sounds great because you could just let it out, <laughs> couldn't you? And then just walk into the venue. <laughs> anyway. It's a, it's a hell terrifying. of a closer. Oh, my God. Gang. Next, um, gas out or poo out, by the way. Either, babe, either. What do we let it? Are you talking about taking a shit on stage? Okay, it's time to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> Now, if you like what you heard, which, come on, girl, I know you did, um, <laughs> feel free to find the rest of the Fuck It Up podcast by searching Fuck It Up, that's F-O-C, It Up Comedy Club, into wherever you get your parties. I'm trying to make parties a thing. Do you think it'll catch on? Do you think we can call podcast parties? Like, make podcasts cute again. Make... Eh, eh. 
a- anyway uh <laughs> and you can also find more information about fuck it up as well as photos from the live show on our instagram at fuck it up comedy um and we have a website and we have all sorts of stuff just if you want it y- you can find it okay so that was the first half join us for part two which should be in your feed right now